I'm Michael Ashley, and this is Ruth Tringham, and we're standing in front of the new Memorial Stadium. Ruth, why are we standing in front of the new Memorial Stadium? Because we are on the hunt for where Ansel Adams took his photographs. We want to find the actual point of view of where he took the stadium photograph. And it turns out that we have a good idea of where he took the photograph, but the subject that he took the pictures of, the stadium, no longer exists while it's been encapsulated by this brand new stadium. So one of the things that we're really interested in, in excavating the past and future, is this concept of re-photography. Ruth, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and why you like re-photography and why it's interesting. I'm Ruth Tringham. Um, for many years I was teaching archaeology in the anthropology department and I recently retired from teaching and I'm now the president and creative director of a little non-profit, big non-profit that we, we have made called the Center for Dig Digital Archaeology. What that allows me to do is to create things that I've been wanting to do for years. One of these things <laughs> is to focus on computational re-photography, which is a way of layering a past photograph behind or in front of a new photograph which is taken from exactly the same point of view. Actually, it was started by this guy, Sergei Larenko, who is one of the people who has really pushed for computational re-photography. He's taken, for example, photographs which were taken from Leningrad in 1941 and underlaid them with photographs from 2012, looking at the changes, a bomb street in one and a pristine new street with people in modern clothes in the other. And for me, the uh, re-photography allows you to look at the changing people who make a place, but yet the place remains the same. And I think this is a really powerful way of looking at the relationship between past and present. It hits you right in the face. The story I'm writing in this, with this one is that the, the old one, the earlier photograph, is in color, and the newer photograph is, is kind of grayed out. This is in Turkey, an excavation I was directing. We are excavating these 9,000-year-old houses and burials and so on. And we clear up, we excavate layer by layer, really carefully for seven years. And then in the seventh year, when it's all done and it's all removed, we fill it in again. Can you believe it? How this is so ephemeral. It's just that's, that's the story of this. The continuation of the story is this one. And this is taken in 2008. That's that same area. This is what it looks like now. You can't see anything. The tourists are walking over us. This is where we excavated. My goodness, how quickly we forget all of our seven years of effort. And so I created this photograph in which I've grayed out the new and made the past in color again and have allowed the color of our excavation to come through the new photograph. Michael, you'll tell us a little about this, how we do the re-photography. So now what's going on is, is we've been asked to, to try to figure out how to do these re-photography experiences and, and share them with you. And so one of the ones you've, we've done, you've already seen, and that's the poster for the On the Same Page 2012. So we went to Sproul Plaza and tried to re-photograph the shot of the, the band with their sousaphones with the Sailor Tower of the Campanile in the background. And what we found is that the cropping that Ansel had taken is so tight. As Ruth has mentioned, it's, it's what's interesting is what's happening on all the periphery edges. So if we go beyond the, the ultimate framing of the composition, to all the different activities that are happening, we see you know, just an amazing amount of life, and that's the life at Berkeley every day. And it's interesting to think what he might have had to have done back in 1964 to get the same shot. Unlike the time of Ansel Adams where everyone was photographing with brownie cameras if they had a camera at all, you live in an amazing time now where devices such as this iPhone take beautiful, very high resolution photographs. And then something like this is actually not that expensive and yet, and yet is able to produce remarkable, very high definition, immersive experiences way beyond just a single photograph. So for example, with, with the re-photography we did on Sprawl, it was actually a combination of over 30 pictures that were put together to produce the one image just to even come close to the resolution that, of the one single photograph that Ansel Adams took in 1960s. Um, and so we're going to do a workshop and, uh, on, on one of the places on, on the campus that 
you as the students have decided it's a really interesting thing for us to, to try to do re-photography and you will not only learn how to do this, you'll be doing it all yourselves. So you'll be going across the campus, looking at the photographs that Ansel Adams took, choosing which ones you'd like for your re-photography, and I'm hoping that you guys will be able to do this kind of thing with the Ansel Adams photographs of the university's past and the university's present. It allows you to create stories and maybe create certain messages about the relationship of the university now and the university then. And then the best products or your product can be, will be eligible to go into the, the contest, the Fiat Lux Remix contest. Well, we're really excited about this and can't wait to get more involved. And we look forward to seeing your products. Do, 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 do. All right, you're gonna so, hand it back to me then. Take it, yes, Michael. now I'm going to hand it back to. Yes.